as another option. So I can use one or the other in order to create the actual painting. Now, this is where things can get really interesting. Let me just make sure this image opens up. Okay, perfect. So again, I do have this as the reference that we're gonna be using for the demo. Okay. This is one of the examples that we're gonna be discussing. Thank you, Dio, for sending this uh, for the sake of the demonstration. But now there are so many variables of thinking about how to adopt and how to start off this uh, assignment. The first thing you could do, now remember, now these are all depending on whether or not if you want to do this, you can simplify the actual painting, meaning finding your center, okay? This is extremely important when we're working a lot looser in this process. So again, what I'm gonna do is apply the grid onto the painting, but I need to do it in a way that's not gonna be too difficult to read, but give me one second. So again, I'm applying a diagonal line from the top right to the bottom left, and then another diagonal line to the bottom or the top left to the bottom right, adding a vertical line in the center. Again, I'm using preview on my Mac. So it's really actually really easy to use. Okay, you can kind hey, of- see. Uh, Go ahead. Um, this is Rachel. I just, I stepped out for a couple minutes to do something real quick. I was just wondering if you went over this yet. Uh, why is the um, canvas is this time uh, like painted all one color first? We're gonna- we're going to talk about that as soon as I get into okay, cool. finishing this grid. And that's an important question. Thank you for that, Rachel. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about using a primary and a secondary color, as well as an analogous way of thinking about the painting. But we'll also use, first, we'll go over monochromatic. And the second, we'll go over um, complementary. as And then we'll get into um, analogous colors in order to create our landscapes. Now, remember, we're not using the natural colors for the painting. And I think this is where a lot of students actually have the difficulty of like finding what exactly they want to start to think about when we're framing this assignment. This is where I want you guys to be much more creative and actually have the flexibility kind of changing the atmosphere within the uh, framework of this assignment. I'm just kind of lowering down the contrast and kind of, again, applying it to the image so I can, I can read my lines a lot smoother, a lot more legible, okay? And again, this is a method that you can use for the sake of the painting. But now let's say if you wanted to put it back, you can just change the contrast. You can, again, make it extremely dull, make it fully saturated, you know, less contrasted, more saturation, less saturation, it's really up to you, okay? Now, let's go to the actual painting. Now, I do have one primary, okay? Um, I'm gonna actually ask Dio, Dio, do you, what color do you want me to use? Do you want me to use the red or would you like me to use the blue? I think the red might be more interesting. I think but the red will be interesting to see, to interpret the difference, especially since I don't think I'll be using red, red <laughs> for mine. Now, I have a few things set up on the side. Again, I have my paper palette, right? I do have a scratch sheet of the canvas pads if I want to make any swatches, okay? I'm going to put that right under here. And I put that here because I, before I make the actual color on my palette, I'm going to apply it to the sheet of the canvas pad for the sake of understanding how it looks on a canvas before I apply it to the big one, okay? Now there's a few things, okay? I have the uh, palette. My primary color is red, okay? Now as my monochromatic perspective, I'm using a complementary color, which will be the green. Now I'm gonna make a green by using blue and yellow. Okay. But you can also use the viridian green to make your darks with the combination of the red. Let's talk a little bit more about that. So for example, we talked a little bit about this, about making a black. I have viridian green 
I try not to do this on your canvas, but like, I just want you guys to, I wanna show you the example. I have Viridian Green. You guys can see that, correct? Yeah. And then I have a Lizard Crimson. Now there's a few things we can do. You're gonna take your palette knife, okay? Let me know if it's hard to see. I'm gonna just sort of really get in there and kind of lay out some of that Elysium Crimson. And I'm not gonna mine, I'm not gonna clean this palette because I'm gonna use a lot of the, uh, the, the greens, the ingredients. Once I add that in there, look what happens. You get this beautiful, almost plum purple violet, which is a great color when you're drawing the beginning of the painting, okay? This is my sort of medium to use. You can see how rich that is. That's almost black. But the more and more you'll look at it, and those of you who are following along on your canvas pads, I hope you're doing this, um, you'll start to see how those color variations will change throughout the painting process. But the thing to keep in mind would be to focus on using that primary red, but changing the intensity of, of the tint, which will be more white, and then these shades, instead of using black, we'll be using the viridian green, and as well as the mixed green we're going to be using for the blue and yellow. So let me get some paper towels. So I'm going to put this on the side, okay? So I have that on my side. I have my container, my small little container, okay, filled with my brush with some water, okay? I am using a number 16 synthetic brush. Now I'm going to take a little bit of that and I'm going to just zoom out slightly. I'm going to go over the canvas pads right here. I'm going to apply a brush mark. You can start to see it when I dilute it more with water. It's a violet. I actually dilute that even more. Does everybody see that? But then the thickness and thinness of the color will change dramatically. Now, because of this red that I applied as the background, I want that to kind of seep through the painting when I apply more greens and more reds. So for example, I have that on my side. I have my yellow I'm gonna mix. Let me go back to the palette. I'm just putting it here so you guys can see. I have my yellow, cadmium yellow. Okay, I'm running out. Yeah, of I have a question. Go ahead. I realized that three of my brushes were left the wrong direction in my uh, water bowl, and they have now dried very hard. Is there a way to get acrylic paint out of them without ruining the bristles, or do I just need to scrap these? Um, is it when that are they bristle or synthetic? Do you? Um, two of them are natural, and I'm not sure what the Princeton Art and Brush Company is. It doesn't uh, have paint covering the uh, handle, so I don't know. Try using dish soap. Okay, like soak them? Yeah, soak them in dish soap. Uh, somebody else was said something. I said Windex. Oh, good to know. Yeah, I just, yeah. I usually am better at doing that, but apparently my, my poor little fan brush and two of my little brushes are uh, solid. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It happens, guys. Trust me. That's why you only need a few brushes. You don't need too much, but then we're going to encounter that problem. So it's okay. Do you, if you do need brushes, just let me know. I might have some extras if you want to uh, do come pick some up at the studios, but that's if you do need more. Thank you. Yeah. No Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is any other questions? Now I have my cadmium yellow. Notice they're right next to each other because I want to be able to use all these colors in the sense of making a monochromatic painting. I'm going to take some of the blue, again, just blending it in there. Now I'm being just really careful. I don't want to move too much of my palette, but since I'm directly on top of the canvas, it's going to be a little bit harder. But now, now this is a good green right there. That's a fairly a good green to use. 
I'm gonna actually mix the variation of value with these color combinations for the sake of the painting, as well as add white for my highlights. Now, this is the only color combinations I'll be using for the entire painting. So this is what I mean by limiting your palette. Focus on when you're looking at the color wheel, look at what's on the opposite side when you're using complementary colors. But your main focus would be to kind of change the intensity by adding the tint of the white, which will make it lighter, but also adding the shade by using a complementary color, which is the uh, crimson red, okay? Also, as well as the viridian green. But we'll also make our green with our blue, cobalt blue, as well as titanium, excuse me, um, cadmium yellow. Now, for example, if I dilute this with a little bit of water, and let's just say hypothetically, for the sake of the test, we're gonna make a sort of swatch here, just, I don't know, just blending it onto the palette. Okay, I'm gonna clean the brush so I don't cross contaminate this violet that we made earlier. I'm gonna take a little bit of the violet, just a little bit, mix it. What do you get? You get a brown. Okay, oops, hold on. Hard to see, there you go. Really diluted with water. You can see, you see that greenish brown. Add a little bit more. You guys see that? Now I can take that to, again, my canvas sheet and see how that looks. Now this is again, another color combination I'm gonna be using for adding a mid-tone to a dark with my main green and red, okay? Any questions so far? Just straighten up the camera. Okay. I have a question, this is Carla. Go ahead, Carla. With the water, so you have to be really careful because Oftentimes, then if I, you know, then I go back and forth and I add water, then I want color, then I have too much color, then I have too much water. Yeah. You got to add a little just... bit at a, at a time, okay. Carla. And I think that's yeah, where okay. the, the tricky part happens. It's like, yeah. Sometimes, let's say if it's too uh, transparent, you're like, what's going on? Is it not enough water, not too much paint, not enough paint? Uh, should I add uh, more water, or less water? It's all depending on how much you add. That's why the water could be a little bit, uh, almost as a crutch, meaning like it, it could change the entire painting. Yes. Also okay. might be a really exciting accident that happens because again, this is a learning process. We're using this method to kind of, again, understand how much, how little can we use within the parameters of the painting. Yes, thank that you. That makes sense? Yes, thanks. Absolutely. Now, let me pull up the reference. Give me one second, minimize this. So I have the reference pulled up on my side. Now again, we're only figuring out the composition of the painting. So we're just drawing it out, okay? So first off, I'm gonna take my darkest darks, which I made early with that violet. It's a combination of the viridian green and crimson red. I'm gonna dilute it with just a little bit of water. And again, this goes back to Carla's question about how much water to, can we use or should we use? This, it, there's no really sort of method to under, uh, you, uh, follow. It's really just using a little bit at a time to find what really is comfortable for you to use. And to me, I'm using a sort of a ratio of about 20% water, if that helps, onto my uh, plastic palette. So I'm gonna map out the composition. So, so far, let me see. Make sure my reference is much more legible. I'm going to make my image bigger. So we're going to start off with our brush. And you can kind of see that separation between where it is in the center, which is right about there. And I'm just, again, just roughly painting the composition. I have the mountain here on this side going down. So do you approach it a little differently because uh, then you would like an oil? Uh, because I know like I haven't been watching all of Bob Ross's entire series and we're like 15 episodes in uh, with acrylics. Is it, is it a different order in that you do things? It, it really is. But the only thing is because of the, again, unfortunately, guys, the parameters of 
quarantine, I would love to use oils, but we can't because the acrylics are the are much more safer at home. Um, it is going to be different, unfortunately. Um, I would, you know, want to use the same format, but again, we just don't have that luxury. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know if that if that helped you, but like we will be trying to use a sort of different method within the acrylics in order to create our landscapes. It's good. So, I'm, I'm still going to be studying oils, even though I can't currently use them anyway. So thank you. Of course. Again, guys, I mean, you are free to do whatever it is that you like outside of class, but like for the sake of our framework of, of this class, we have to use just the acrylics. Unfortunately, I would, I'm, I'm an oil painter myself, but again, because of the frame of the class, I, I don't want anybody to, you know, get sick or kind of fall ill <laughs> because of the oil fumes that we're going to be using in the mediums. So now I'm just, again, just mapping out this composition. Okay. Again, I have my foreground, some of those rocks. I'm just loosely painting this really, really roughly. Doesn't have to be per perfect. These are the rocks in that foreground. This is where all the water will be. I have the other side here of that landscape. That's sort of using the side, diluting it a little bit more. Notice how quickly I'm doing this. This is again, just really, now this is a dry on wet process I'm doing. This is not a la prima, wet on wet. If my surface is wet and I go directly over that with wet paint, that is an a la prima approach, wet on wet. You can use that for the sake of just kind of laying down your, your color combination. And again, I'm just adding some more Just kind of really, really getting loose. And showcasing where all those trees are. And again, this is the image that Dio has sent for the demo. If you want to follow along with this demonstration, you can do that as well. You don't necessarily have to, but so you can get an idea of how I'm framing the painting in the context. The sky, I'm going to leave roughly, um, sort of almost not slightly negative, but not too much. Is that sort of the, the bottom half here in the center of the painting, you can kind of see how it's mapped out in the center. That's where that sort of perspective lies on the atmospheric space. But again, I noticed the mountains in the background are a lot duller. So I can change that intensity, but for the sake of the layering, we're gonna add a little bit, just sort of a wash. And this is going back to Carla's question, how much water do we use? I'm adding now a ratio of 50-50, 50% water and 50% paint and kind of really getting into the fibers of the painting. You can kind of hear it. Again, just kind of creating those shadows first, because then I'll go back and I'll add more richer greens. And I'm gonna use the background of that red, that intensity, kind of really highlight those darks and those lights. With it again, the monochromatic. Going a little bit quickly. Again, I'm just using a synthetic number 16 uh, rounded brush. Okay, filling that in. Now, those rocks, those crevices, I want those sharp edges. Just kind of like, again, angling it in about 45 degrees, diluting it 50 50 with water but also should remembering that that's where the rocks are. What other questions do we have, guys? If you were to, to just, uh, if you were to do a complimentary, would your lighter color be the highlight? It would be the color with white. So it would be oh of whatever the object is. Correct. If you're doing complementary, oh okay, that makes so, sense. So for example, so we have a variable. Let's say there is a light of the uh, of the water. Okay, we're, let's talk a little bit about the water. We're not using the blue. 
right, of the reference. You're going to take the green that we made, okay, and we're going to add a little bit of the white. There's my titanium white. Now remember, my main color would be a variety of the greens. So this is what it means to use that color, but the red will make it pop when we add more layers. So for example, I'm gonna dilute this heavily with white. And I'm gonna add a little bit of water, kind of dilute that. So for example, that's the green, it's very white, but I'm gonna work around some of those objects to kind of showcase that highlight. But I'm also gonna dilute it with water. Excuse me, I add what did you what are you using a very fine brush now? No, I'm using the same brush. Same brush. Okay, same brush. Exactly, yeah. And you no, know, you could, Carla, if you want to use a different brush, you're more than happy to. Now this is again almost a, a whiter green as my light but I'm not gonna cover the entire thing because I want a little bit of transparency. You can see that dramatic jump between shadows and lights. Now, the more and more I'm gonna work on this painting will be depending on how much color I add intensity. So for example, if I add more green, let's say for a middle light, this is a middle light, right? So this is gonna be more green. It's almost sort of a, I would say, 50%, oh no, actually 75% more yellow to the blue to make that green. Do you guys see that? Let me know if you want me to zoom in on my camera and I will. So um, for clarification, um, when you, you're doing it in like, the painting is in like greens and blues. So that's why you put the red under it to make it pop more. So if I'm using, I just use the red as an example for the demo, Rachel, but the, if I'm using green as my monochromatic palette, meaning my main primary color, the red is my complementary color to the green. So then now I'm gonna have fun changing the variables and shades and tints by adding whites and adding a complement, which is the crimson red to the green. So we added that crimson red to the viridian green. That, that's why we got that rich shadow. So if um, if I was doing like the monochromatic approach, yep. adding the complementary color For to shadow. the, um, adding the complementary color down as a base is, would be a good first step. Exactly. Okay, and then you you also use it, you mix it with the monochrome, with the colors you're using yep. to make shadows. Correct. Okay. Now, I diluted this red with some water. So this was like 50-50, 50% water, 50% red. Now, the red that I used was the alizarin crimson, right? I added that as the base, but then I took the alizarin crimson and added it to the viridian green to get a rich purple color as my shadows. That's my shadow color. And I'm going to change that. Let's say, for example, I'm going to mix that with, I'm going to, let's make a green that we mix with our blues and yellows and add that to that viridian and that crimson, you get a what? You'll get an interesting brown gray. And this is where it gets interesting to kind of have mid-tones. And again, this goes all the way back to, let me showcase the palette. I'm just gonna raise this slightly. This goes back to the palette that I have. So instead of using like a light pink for your highlight, you would use the brighter, the white and green combination and then put red on top of it. Exactly. So for okay. example, that viridian green here and then that crimson red was a combination of this color. And then the yellow and the blue, when I make them a green, I had the green here. I mixed both of those colors to make a muddy brown. I'm gonna use this as my mid-tones meaning your middle shades and your middle highlights, you could dilute that more with white. 
making it brighter. And now, for example, I can use that as a lighter highlight, but it still has green in there. You guys see that? There's the rock right over there. Also, thank you all for the Windex uh, suggestion. It is definitely helping. Great, that's awesome. And then now you could also add it to the green of what we made here. Again, make, make the shadows reflection off of the, the mountains. So let's say if I'm just using- I had a quick question. Go ahead, Lena. So the part that you're drawing, is that the water or the grass? This is the water. All right, and so it's not gonna look blue, it's gonna be like greenish color? Exactly. You're not really copying the reference. You're only using your limited palette to create that mid-tones, those darks and shadows with one color, meaning my complementary color, which is the green. Now, if I darken this green, I add what? Crimson red. So for example, let's say if this, I would say probably this area, I'm adding just more, just raw green. This is blue and yellow, cadmium yellow and, and cobalt blue. Say if I added more shadows, hypothetically, right? Take my viridian, and then I can go back and now add shadows. And I would blend some of those areas to make. Okay, so the whole painting is not really gonna be in the actual colors of the reference. It's just gonna be the flow that we have. Yep. Okay. Now for your preliminary paintings, meaning the smaller ones you're gonna be doing on your canvas pads, you're gonna do all three. You're gonna do one complementary, one analogous, and one comp um, monochromatic, just for exercising. It's the same way of using it as a preliminary drawing. And the, the main drawing we're making is going to be um, monochrome or or, or complementary. Or you will choose that. You, it's up to you to choose your main painting. You're talking oh, about so the you, painting. You right? could do any of the three. Yep. Okay. Cool. For the larger scale painting, for the smaller ones on the canvas pads, right on these sides, I'm just pulling up the color wheel. You're going to be using. You're going to make the same painting, one with mon monochromatic one with a complementary and one with analogous. So three of these will be the same image of your landscape, but then on your, on your actual stretch canvas, which is this one here, you will be submitting that with your three preliminary paintings. Okay, and then with monochromatic, what makes it different from analogous is would you just use like the one, one paint shade and then just use white to make yep. it different? Colors. You'll use white for your highlights only for monochromatic. Okay. Now so you can good. add a complementary just a little bit to darken your monochromatic painting. Okay. So it's a green. You use a little bit of a crimson red to make it mm -hmm. darker, just a little bit, not too much. Because if you add too much, then it bleeds over to a complementary painting. But that, that's the whole point of adapting how much to use of how little we mix yeah. from our palettes in order to create the differences between a monochromatic to a complementary painting. And again, those are just exercises. They won't be graded on how well or how precise they are. It's just sort of, again, to wrap your head around the assignment of playing around with limiting your palette of monochromatic to complementary and then analogous. Analogous will be a variety of colors. So the third preliminary painting that you're gonna be doing on your canvas pads, right, on these sheets here, would be to use a variety of the three to four colors on the color wheel that are right next to each other, right? So for example, if we switch this to now a more um, analogous color, I can now start adding blue-green. So for example, excuse me, I'm gonna take some blue, add it to my green. Just again, for the sake of the demo, I could then now go back and put a blue green for this tree. Do you guys see that? I could do the same thing here for this tree. 
Now I could also dilute that with a little bit of white. And again, this is depending on if you want to do this. You could change the tint of that color. You could change the tint of this color with a little bit of white, but not too much because you don't want that to fight with the highlights and the shadows of your primary color, which is this lighter green. Did that make sense? Yeah, thank you. What other questions do we have? Now this is now I'm adapting a more, again, analogous palette of adding three to four colors onto the landscape. This is where I think a lot of students get that confusion of adding too much or too little. So you really had to take it one step at a time. So a great approach would be exercising first with one color, just one color to make a landscape. You can change the intensity by adding white. That's monochromatic, right? So that's one done. The next one will be just complementary. Without using too much of the white, use complementary colors in order to create the painting, right? Without any grounds, meaning you don't have to paint the, the background yet for your preliminary paintings. But then when you get into your analogous colors, you have three to four options of colors to use. And so you're gonna see how well and how comfortable that is towards the painting. And then you will decide on your large scale 18 by 24 inch stretched canvas, which one you would like to use as your final painting. Did that make sense, everyone? Yeah. Again, guys, if we have any confusion. Sorry, I'm still confused about it. Lena? Yeah. What you... oh. So if we have a landscape picture that uses, like the reference uses pinks, purples, and everything, we don't use those. We just use the whites and like yep. um, exactly. the shadows and stuff. Exactly. Okay, so we, okay. So for example, I'm gonna I'm gonna change the let me go back to the reference because I think this might be um, a little bit more easier in context. Now, if I go back to the reference that Dio sent, right? You could, in essence, right? You can you're gonna change the temperature, or excuse me, not the temperature, the tint. Notice, like if you start to play around with some of those color variables on your computer, you'll see how it changes. Like for example, this is one color palette of an, uh, a burnt umber sienna color, right? The more brown. This is a monochromatic palette right here, just one color. You're adding white as the highlight. That is the only thing. A complementary will change it, right? Now, if it was a brown, or let's say if it was a green, it will, your complementary color opposite of the color wheel will be what? Red. Red, right? And the same thing for the violets. Violets will be more yellow. Same thing with the blues will be more orange. And these are things that you have to sort of remember when you're practicing on your uh, 12 by 16 canvas pads of what colors work well for you. Did that make sense, Lena? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I have a question. Go ahead. It's sort of along the line of what Lena said. So like the picture that I'm using is mostly blue and yellow, but there is some white in it. Yes. What I would do is try to like tint the white and Correct. then I would only use the white paint for like the brightest pipe, the, the brightest uh, white that's still left after I tinted it. Exactly. Got it. Thank you. What other questions do we have? So your first one, okay, on your canvas pads. Now you can tape your edges, okay, you could use your tape. Okay, just tape the whole thing. All, you know, every frame, just to kind of make it much more manageable. All four sides, okay. And then just to have an, a border at the edge. You, it's a really a preliminary drawing before you get into the final painting, okay. You work with one color, monochromatic, Second one, okay, your second canvas pad would be complementary, using complementary colors only. And then the third one will be analogous. Analogous will be free form to anybody. So you can mix and match any color you would like. It has to be within the, the parameters of three to four colors on the color wheel. So let's say, for example, you take your color wheel, right? This is just one of the 
color was it from last week? Analogous colors would be these colors. Another option would be those colors. Now you could also do th these four or these four as a sort of exercise. Now you can change those intensities with white, okay? You can change the lighter colors of those palettes with white. Your painting should actually look really vibrant with a variety of options. So for example, this won't look natural to the reference. Remember that. Part, this is, the, again, the restriction of the assignment would be to use the limited palette that we have, right? Only restrictions of those colors to create a landscape. This goes back to the question Rachel asked earlier. Can it be any reference? Absolutely. But you have to follow along those methods of using either analogous, complementary, or monochromatic palettes. Does that make sense? Or should I explain it again? And I it, don't know. Can, go ahead. Can you could you explain it again? I'm sorry. I'm I'm having a hard time. No, no, no worries. I can explain it again. So for the assignment, okay. So our image that we have that Dio sent for the demo is here. Let me just do a screen share. I have this image, right? We all can see this. Yes. Yeah. So we are not using any of these blues and greens and browns and violets and these grays and you know colors from the reference. We are not copying these colors, okay? We are changing the colors to a limited palette, meaning one color. For the demo, I used green as my primary color. I added a complementary color on the bottom on my first layer of the red to kind of uh, use as a contrasting color, right? I'm gonna use a variety of green only with white for my monochromatic painting, right? Now for the next one I will do, this is from on the canvas pads. I'm gonna do complementary colors. I'm gonna add more red. So for example, I'll use green, a, vari a variety of green, so I could be more um, blue, uh, excuse me, more um, viridian green or the green that I will mix with my yellow and my blue, okay? So on my palette, I have my mixed green with my yellows and blue and my viridian. I'm gonna take my complementary color, which will be what? Red, and mix slight variations of the red in order to create a shadow or a midtone, okay? Which I have in the painting. But then if I go to my analogous colors, let's say I'm still using the green and red, I can switch it up with more orange red and more yellow green. So I have my regular green, my yellow green, my red and my orange red. Those are my four palettes. And I can also add white to change the highlights to make it more, adding a tint of light. Did that make sense? Yes, I, my question is also, are we working, are those three different um, yep. canvas pads or are we working on top of Three one? different canvas pads, yeah. Three okay, different. got it. So you'll be and so three different images also, or same image. Same image, same exact okay. reference you're going to be using. Part of the okay. assignment is learning how to use that limited again the palette of the same image, but three separate times using three different methods. Color combination. Okay, thank you. Of course. Any other questions, guys? Was that clear? I apologize. Uh, yeah, this is Jessica. I have a question. So for the complementary color. No, uh, uh, so we only allow to use two color, correct? The opposite color, and mm -hmm. then that uh, we could add additional white to change the tune. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. So, for example, when we go back to the the lecture, okay, this is the palette we're using. So one canvas pad will be monochromatic. Okay. Notice this is one of blue. 
one of red and green, and another one, a sort of a combination of, of like, for example, violet, blue, and teal, so on and so forth. Let me get Lena back in here. That you could use any orientation. I just applied, you know, landscape or portrait method. It's up to you, depending on your reference. Now, based on the lecture, you have this color wheel that we're going to be using, but this is a sort of the, the format to follow. So you have monochromatic, right? Adding white to the, to the base color, complementary, opposite of the color wheel, and analogous. So a combination of three to four colors on the color wheel. So this is the reference you'll be using, okay? The format, okay? To make all three on based off of these colors. Now, these are examples of artists using monochromatic, complementary, and analogous color palettes. You can see they're all different, right? But just a few examples. But then how you use that would be depending on the palette that you decide you want to use. I can go about doing this, for example, I'm gonna use violet as my um, color. I'm, I can also add a layer of yellow underneath the canvas as my first layer, and then slowly just add violet on top of the yellow. You'll see what happens as a color combination. It reacts to the painting, right? And this is, again, it's more process oriented rather than formally looking at the natural world. You're actually using the color to create the painting rather than using the correct color on the reference. So it's gonna be a tricky process because this is gonna be a new method of painting, but I want you to really explore the variables of those color combinations. So then learn for what colors you actually can use. Every painting will look different, obviously. Let's say for example, if I used blue as my monochromatic painting for this painting here on this image, if I used blue, my complementary color will be the orange. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of the orange at a time. How do I make my orange? I add crimson and cadmium yellow to make a, enough of an orange that I like. I'm gonna take my cobalt blue and have fun with it. But I could also add a layer of the or light orange, a lighter orange, like a red, or I would say more yellow orange, but maybe depending on the color, I wanna use a first layer on the painting right, on my finished, on my uh, final painting. But then if I go back and add more cobalt blue, I can change the intensity of the blue by adding more what? Orange or, for shadows, or I can add more white to make it more lighter. So every painting will be different in that variable. There's so much variety to use. Within that, you have a sort of ways in which you can start to think about the natural world, but this is more sort of aligns towards looking at the reference and making a direct copy. A painting would look much more interesting in the context of looking at complementary to tertiary palettes or complementary or analogous color variations. So you have your monochromatic, complementary and analogous palettes. There's so many variables that you can use, but again, it's how much white or how uh, much shadow you add to the paintings, which will all be different in that way. Does that make sense? That yeah. makes sense. Again, guys, I know it could be, this is again, another, you know, assignment we're gonna be doing. We we'll have about a week to do this. So you're gonna be submitting three canvas pads, okay? So one of them, one monochromatic, one complementary, one analogous. When that's all done, you will then go back to your big painting. You will decide and say, okay, which one do I wanna do for the painting? You have to choose one to use for the painting. We will critique the one that you use. And when you're presenting, you will discuss the color combinations you discovered throughout this process. And you'll actually then be able to then to decide which one would do what would I like to um, present for the painting. Questions about that? Uh, do we also have to submit the canvas pad paintings with the yes. final project? You do. Okay, thank yeah. you. Now, these canvas pads shouldn't take that long. Okay, this should take a matter of like only a few minutes, to be honest, because they're just sketches. They're not finished paintings. Remember that. These are just preliminary paintings that you're going to be using to get familiar with the, with the actual assignment. So if you're just using a blue, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be more aligns to exercising what you learned from this 
before you get into the larger painting. Okay. Any other questions we have? Uh, this is Dio. Um, do you want me to do those three on top of the two that I already kind of worked on in advance? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but do you want me to do six of them or do you want me to do three of them? If you're, um, well, for 201, yes, you have to do three, but then for the 202, I know since you're going to be working on the other one, um, you could just do three. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know that's going to be, uh, that's a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah. What other questions do we have? Okay. So again, I'm going to be working on this demo more and more. Okay. If you have any further questions, guys, feel free to shoot me a message during this week. This will be due next week on Tuesday, which will be um, our second half, our second uh, critique for the landscapes and we will go from there. I will stay here a little bit more for the class uh, until 4.30 if you guys need to talk to me. But other than that, you guys are free to go.